Hello and welcome back to the Quest for Zest. I'm Clark Underwood and this time I am in the beautiful New York City headed to meet artist Tamara Kostianowski. She's making sculptures of butchered meat, beautiful birds, giant tree stumps, really incredible looking work. I can't wait to see how she's making it. It's all cloth and textiles and really awesome. But first I gotta get down in the subway, get over to her part of town, check out her studio. So see you there. Tamara, I found your studio. Yes, hey. So good to meet you, I'm Good Clark. to meet you too. Yes. Thanks for coming. Wow, your work is brilliant and it's everywhere. It is everywhere. So good. Well, tell me a little bit about where we are. I know we're in your studio, but tell me about your space, how you're working in here. We are in East New York in Brooklyn. Um, this is a studio building with uh, a few really great artists. So I'm really excited to be here. Take me back a little bit. What drew you to textiles as a, as a medium? Uh, that's a great question. You know, I grew up in Argentina and I mm -hmm. came to the U.S. to study art. And um, within the first year of me being in the States, the Argentinian economy went through like a big default of the economy. Uh, all of a sudden, the money that I had to study and to buy art supplies was like reduced to a minimum. Mm -hmm. So one thing I had a lot of was like sweaters and my own clothing that I had brought in excess in fear of the winters of the, the East Coast in the US. So I started using my own clothing to my cart. You know, the options were like, go home or do what you can. And over time it became, you know, a political statement. I wasn't buying supplies. I was working with a material that had a lot of history or memories more than history. Um, but over time it kind of like revealed the history of like, techniques that kind of interweave the um, materials of the earth with the techniques of like humankind. So there's a lot of history to textiles that I was always very drawn to. In those first experiments when you were messing with like your, literally your clothes, yeah. you're cutting them up, what did you decide to make? Did you go straight to the the nature and the yeah. birds and the and you've got meat hangings that are so it, interesting. What'd it you, what'd it you... was really the meats, you know, because okay. um, growing up in Argentina, you know, you're Texan, so mm. you probably sh we share this like obsession with meat and yeah. barbecues. Mm. Um, <laughs> it was really the meat, which is a ubiquitous image that you see in, in all the cities and towns in Argentina. The hanging carcass that um, to me was almost like a symbol of. Um, violence, um, violence towards the female body in particular because I was working with my own clothing. Um, and um, But there was also something really visceral and it was connected to food politics and to so many like things that were like happening in the US where I was living at the time. So it, definitely the meats came first. Um, from the meats I went into like some bird experiments and these types of like logs with um, fabric is somewhat of a recent body of work lots of layers. These are like cut-off trees. So they, they also, I think of them as like being kind of like a carcass of a tree as well, right? Yeah. Minus the blood. When your work's in a gallery or in a show, what's your um, hope when, for when people see them? Is there a certain reaction that you get excited by or? You know, I, um, I, I'm excited when people are um, interested in sort of the history of the of the the textile and also in the visceral nature of the image you know like because in a way when we talk about animals and we talk about dead animals in particular it's such a world that is indirectly related to us like when we go to the supermarket to buy meat like you know you get it on a styrofoam tray or, you know um, it, it's, it's not that you know exactly what happened and I think that with my meat work you get that kind of like primal connection to an to an animal which is ultimately you know the same material that you and I are made of you know right. it's like flesh is sort of like the common material so I think mm -hmm. that something that has to do with that maybe, yeah and maybe. in some of your pieces I saw you were blending like the you know, the hanging carcass with some life. Like Absolutely. A, like, like a rainforest look inside of it. Yeah. What's what's that competition yeah. there? Yeah, that that's um, that's a great question also. I am very, so I did a lot of meat works that were just meat, right? And they're very visceral and bloody and like in your face type of imagery. Mm -hmm. But most recently I started thinking, what if these meat works could become um, receptacles or like uh, vessels for like the development of new life right like what if there was like an actual transformation of these symbols of death and like slaughter into like a new type of ecology right like and, i mean it's utopian but it's like a premise of like uh, a new way of thinking of right. the earth 
Well, my right or wrong, my first reaction to the uh, to the carcass with with the life in it was like, yeah. it is um, you know violent, but it also has the side of like undeniable nourishment. Like it does sustain life. Yeah. And so there was a there was a cool kind of like, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the Absolutely. feeling I had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, I think there's some something of that there. I'm working on one of those carcass pieces um, in there. Did you see let's that see one? It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. check it out. Show me. Like so, on one side you see the the carcass, right? This is sort of like a quarter of a piece, and I'm, this is a piece in progress. So you can see how you have the ribs, but you also have like the outgrowth of vegetation coming through, and like a bird like starting to like feed off this thing. Which this is like in a very early um, stage as well. Gotcha. But you get that, and you know these hooks, by the way are always really important to me to make them really masculine and aggressive looking mm -hmm. and, and what's this modeled off of is this a cow yeah it's half a cow half so a cow. so if you can imagine like yeah. there would be another half here uh, to off. yeah exactly Split you're a little bit of a textile butcher i am uh. <laughs> <laughs> part of the spine and then like birds and like the vines are growing and somehow this um, you know very crude image of like a desecrated body is like turning mm -hmm. into like as you said like you know new yeah. uh, nourishment for new life. It really kind of has a carcassy feel to it too. Yeah. Like whatever you're building these with on the inside, it has like that you know rib bone. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's important to me that they have that kind of three dimensionality and there's some like you know you have to make the the viewer believe the story to a certain degree. So I'm actually like a nerd for like. Um, anatomically correct gotcha. like things if yeah, i don't kind of, do what kind of research goes into oh, did i get it right a lot can i show you oh, something gladly. like about that yeah. like for example these um books have been with me for a very long time so oh yeah i have like hundreds of images some printed some on my computer of like models of how you know the how it gets cut how, how it gets, gets cut slayed yeah and you know, and no matter how many times I look at these images, I always learn something new. And mm -hmm. you see, like, luckily there's a lot of documentation online right. for these kinds of people who are into butchering. Yeah, it's a butchering. good thing you don't have to hang some rotting meat next to your fabric. <laughs> right. <laughs> I did a little bit of that at you some did. point. Yeah, it was kind of gross. Did I tell you that my father was a plastic surgeon? So, no. uh, so yeah, um, my father was a plastic surgeon and I spent kind of like my teenage years, like helping out a little bit in the office. I, and I'm, when I say that, I mean, just like opening the door and maybe answering the phone and, um, but just being around kind of like the open body, you know, seeing these images of like what's behind the skin, mm -hmm. um, which was at around the same time that I kind of fell in love with art and I started going to art school. So I kind of like blended in like the landscape of the inner body with the world of painting that at the time I was really into. Yeah. Um, so it became kind of like my my thing you know yeah. like um, I'm still very drawn to that no, it for me it was fascinating it was like the red of the blood I mean I know it sounds really gory and like that I'm like I hope you don't think that I'm like super macabre about this but like um, but you know there's a shine and a gloss to the blood and like even like fat like the fat that we have under our eyes and like um, is like really bright yellow and has like this like texture like when we see it on a chicken leg it's a lot less appealing but like if you can like abstract that from like the dead animal and like think of it as like aesthetic like language mm -hmm. like um, I was really captivated by that and somehow that became my vocabulary like to this day like I still draw from that and this is this work that you see here um, is kind of like the farthest I come away from those early images of mm -hmm. like the body dismembered um, but I keep coming back to it and somehow I feel that I'm synthesizing like all of these elements with this most recent work. As soon as I saw your work, I just said, that is something special. That is something different. And that is someone I want to talk to. So, <laughs> I'm so glad that you let me in here and showed me around and let me see your work because it really, really provokes thought and beauty at the same time. And I love that. Mm, so, thank you so much. Yeah, That's thanks. really nice to hear. Thanks for coming and visiting. Yeah, happy to have been here. It's awesome. Well, I had a great time meeting Tamara seeing her studio, seeing her work, hearing about how the inspiration for her sculptures came to be. It was really something to see, really something to feel and experience too. So 
anyways, I gotta get back to my hometown, which means I gotta get back on the subway, which means I gotta go down these stairs. So I'll catch you next time on the Quest for Zest.